from inside Memorial Stadium. This is the Huskers Radio Network podcast. All Huskers, all the time. Here's your host, Jessica Cootie. Well, we welcome you back into another edition of the Huskers Radio Network podcast. I'm Jessica Cootie, and we're going to talk a little softball today, but we're also going to talk a little bit of softball, what they do off the diamond. So we welcome in Carly Seavers, a member of the Nebraska Huskers softball team. How are you doing, Carly? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Yeah, thanks for coming on. So you, we had Coach Rebell on a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and boy, she just raved about how big of a role you've played for this team and how important you've been to you know, cause I think when you watch this team, there's no denying the chemistry is there yes. and it's just, you guys really like each other mm-hmm. and, and she credited you a big part of that. So wanted to get your perspective and going into your final home weekend and yeah. senior weekend. How does that feel? Oh, well, it's an honor to have coach Rell speak, speak of me like that. And, um, it's an honor to be playing with amazing girls. I have to give the credit to them for the team chemistry. We all just get along so well. Um, but going into my final home weekend and senior weekend there's a lot of emotions i've just kind of been looking back on the four year my four years here and seeing what i came in like where how i came in to how i'm leaving in the program and the culture and just really proud of um the work that you know that i've put in as a person and as a player um to be who i am today that's awesome so big series coming up this weekend yes. too and we're going to dive into all of that but let's go back to the last couple of weekends because mm-hmm. you guys had a long winning streak going and mm-hmm. then end up falling two games to wisconsin and then uh, ohio state too and ohio state was a heartbreaker on saturday but then you guys bounced back in a big way on sunday yes. how big was that for this team to bounce back the way you guys did on sunday it was huge um we had a game plan going into sunday and that was that we were going to fight um, we're not a team that rolls over, and we know what we want. Um, I know any of the my teammates you've talked to, we laid out goals really early of how we want to go about it, and um, we roll with the punches. We know that um, season there's ups and there's downs, but if you want to have more ups, you got to fight through the downs. So um, it was huge. It was a lot of fun, and it's exactly the way we wanted to end the weekend to go into this weekend. So you guys, I mean, pretty much have – secured your spot in the postseason now where that might be depends on how you finish out the season Mm -hmm. but you know I've been asked this a lot and I know you know people have asked you know on the show and have asked around here what's different about this team because you got a lot of the same people back right from last year a couple years ago so what what what's different about this year's team oh man um I would say the biggest difference is our mindset and who we are um so kind of going to that is like we're just very comfortable with being ourselves we aren't trying to replicate other teams or do what other teams are doing we're confident in who we are as a team and who we are as teammates and we're like this is who we are Um, these are the goals we're laying out and we trust in our plan and our goals that we've laid out in the off season the work that we put in in the summer and we have you know the confidence that we can do what we want to do Every player that's come in here, and a lot of them young, because you guys got a lot of young we do. studs on this <laughs> yes. team. But they've credited the leadership of the seniors and the way that you guys have led. Um, how much are you kind of go- you guys going in as a senior class into this with kind of a sense of urgency, maybe a different perspective? Because this is your last go at it. Yeah. Um, I can't say enough about my other, my senior um, teammates. They're amazing, and they lead so well, and it's been a journey within the last four, three years with some of them. And I wouldn't say it's a sense of urgency in a sense. It's more of, you know, we've got one shot and no matter how it plays out on the field, we want to leave our legacy. And I think that's something Coach Raval has done a really great job of is how are we going to leave Nebraska softball? And I think we've all taken that to heart and it's translated on the field. It seems like there's just such an appreciation from this team every time you get a chance to step out on it softball field and Mm -hmm. you don't always see that from teams just that appreciation to get another day to to play together absolutely um it's i mean i know from the senior class especially we had we were here when COVID happened and we were here when our season abruptly ended one day and we weren't for sure when we were going to get it back and here we are now going into our last season and i can't tell you enough about how much i'm just trying to cherish every last moment and i think Um, We recognize how special this year has been, not just the seniors, but everyone has recognized how special this year has been. And Coach Val had mentioned, she said, we don't need to try to, you know, we're not working to be special. We already are special. And that really hit home to me. And it's 
now it's not working to try to create more, but rather cherishing what we have and doing what we can with that. So you've been a big part of the Pin Pal program. Yeah. Uh, you actually helped start it. And um, you're going to do something special for them on Friday night, right, mm -hmm. Out, um, at, at Bowling Stadium. But we've talked. I've talked a lot about it on the show since I went out to the nursing home and yes. saw you guys, and it was it was really impactful for me and so special to get to see because here's a team that's playing so well, but then takes so much um, pride and, and wants to give back to the community. So I just I wanted to dive into that with you because there's so many stories that you know there's time restraints and other yes. other platforms. But I wanted to get your perspective on some of these amazing stories that have happened through this Pin Pal program. Mm -hmm. well, let's start from the beginning. Tell okay. me about how all of this idea came about and why you wanted to start this program. Yes, absolutely. Um, so it happened, it kind of, the idea kind of started um, after COVID or really when COVID had happened. Um, obviously we all know it started March, 2020. I became a CNA that summer. They had a special training program where you could get your CNA a lot quicker because there was a more, uh, like a bigger need for it. And I, so I was able to see firsthand of kind of just the restrictions that were placed on residents in nursing homes. And um, I also, you know, was trying to visit my grandma. Um, obviously that was really hard too with restrictions and she wasn't able to go anywhere. So not even residents in nursing homes, but obviously any, any elderly um, person around like the Lincoln area, it was just like, wow, nobody's able to leave their homes. They're really restricted on that. So I brought this idea in the fall of 2020 to my coach, uh, to all my coaches that why don't we do a pen pal program where we can have a safe way to connect them with um, our teammates. And I know from my time at the nursing home, they are big Husker fans. <laughs> it doesn't matter the sport. It doesn't matter if you're done playing or if you haven't started yet they are big Husker fans and it would mean a lot to be able to have that relationship with um with any Husker athlete so I brought it to my coaches and they were all for it they're like let's do it so I reached out to um the nursing home I had worked at another nursing home and then um as my teammates and every single one of them have a pen pal no one asked not to have one or didn't respond to me they all wanted to be a part of it and i matched them up with the residents that we had some people took on two some people took on three and it kind of went from there that's awesome so their initial reaction when you go to your teammates hey this is what i want to do mm -hmm. what would they say they're like, absolutely that sounds like a great idea they were um they were really excited they um were all I couldn't be blessed with better teammates, really, to put it that simply. And um, they all were really excited and wanted me to get on it faster. To be honest with you, like, <laughs> we want to know who they are. We want to know how soon we can send letters and how soon we can get them back. So it takes a special person to want to work with that, the elderly. And, and in that situation, it's tough, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it can is. be really hard. And so you obviously have the heart for it. Why, why did you want to give back in that area? Um, I love old people. <laughs> um, I just, I have always had a soft spot for them. And I think, I just think there's so much we can learn. Mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes we, you know, we kind of just not disregard, but for back of letter word, a lack of better words, um, don't put as much time and attention into that, into, um, that older population, maybe because of the restrictions there are now, or, um, sometimes there's just, different things that make it a little harder. And um, I just think there's so much we can learn when we take the time to, and the stories they tell are amazing. <laughs> and that's just a soft spot in my heart. So what was the first big story that you thought, wow, this is really making an impact? Wow, um, I could tell so many. <laughs> um, I would say um, Abby Newlin is um, a sophomore on our team. She had Luis and um, they, instead of writing each other, I, they decided to go on the phone with each other um, just to make it a little easier. And um, they started calling each other back and forth and, um, and it got to the point where once restrictions were lifted, she was able to go in in person and see her. And basically, um, I was able to be a part of some of the phone calls and it was like, uh, my family isn't from here or um, I only get to see my family so often, like I consider you my granddaughter. And Aww. she's been invited to the, her birthday party. She turns, I don't quote me, but I believe a hundred in August. Wow. Yes. Wow. And so um, 
and so Abby brings her flowers and I've and I wish I will have to play you a voicemail that I had that Abby got from her and it was like I love you so much um, I can't thank you enough for the time you you put into this and um, that was just like wow like, you know it's making a difference in Luis's life and to the point where we've got birthday parties going on together so that's amazing so it's you guys are reaching out not just here in Lincoln. You've got some pen pals in, I think, Kansas, right? And Yes. But it's also really touched people within this athletics department. And I got to mm -hmm. start with Coach Miller because yes. we talked to her. And you got involved with her mom. But mm -hmm. then you got Billy Andrews involved. And I don't I, know if a lot of mm -hmm. people know this about Billy Andrews, that she's an incredible artist. And yes. so Coach Miller's mom mm -hmm. um, was nonverbal, couldn't really communicate. And so... Tell people what Billy started to do. So, yes, I will reiterate that. Billy <laughs> is an amazing artist. And so, like you said, Coach Miller's mom wasn't able, was nonverbal, wasn't really, wouldn't have been able really to benefit that much from handwritten letters. So, we decided to have Billy paint um, paintings for Coach Miller's mom. And um, Coach Miller's mom was really into flowers and landscapes. So, anytime Coach Miller was going to be going to visit her mom or heading back down to Kansas, um, Billy would paint a picture for her. And um, I got the absolute honor. Billy painted one last painting um, after Coach Miller's mom had passed away, and I was able to go uh, deliver that to the funeral. Oh, my goodness. To Coach Miller. Um, and it was um, – that, that's a special story. It gets me really emotional just to be able to um, – there was a situation, you know, where handwritten letters wouldn't have been the best option, and we were able to use uh, Billy's amazing talents to still – I know she loved the paintings, and it meant a lot. So. Gosh, I'm getting teary-eyed over I here. I know, I know, me too. <laughs> I mean, so – but you look what Billy does. I mean, she's putting up stats. She's in the Big Ten Player mm -hmm. of the Year conversation, and she oh, just yeah. won Nebraska Student Athlete yep. of the Year. And, you know, the things that she's doing on the field and then – look what she's doing off the field. What does that say about Billy Andrews? It shows what an amazing person she is. Um, uh, when I came to her with the idea, I mean, and I'm telling you, these aren't paintings you just whip up in one night. Mm -hmm. they I take, mean, they're incredible. They are beautiful and they take time. And um, I don't quote me, I'm not an artist, but like, you know, she was putting layers on, like you have to take time to wet, let, think, let the paint dry and come back again the next day. And it just shows that despite the success and the, already the enormous amount of time she's putting in um, outside of practice, she's still taking time to give back because she knows how much it means. Um, I used her artistic abilities again um, Friday. We having, we're having the Pin Pal game, and we made T-shirts for all of our Pin Pals to wear, and we're going to be wearing them as well. And I asked her to design the front of the T-shirt, and she came with the design of and it's, a, it's an amazing design, but she actually asked me, she goes, well, where is one of the nursing homes we write to? So I sent her the address, and she used the exact layout of the address between Bowl and Stadium and that nursing home on oh, the T-shirt wow. and sent it to me in all different colors. Like, she went all out for it, and we're in the middle of a tough travel schedule, so she's amazing. So I, people are probably going to want to know, when they see you guys running out in those shirts, where can we get them? Are you guys, is there a plan in place to maybe sell them, and you can... <laughs> Maybe have a, a fundraiser foundation going. Well, this is a great idea. I have not thought that far ahead. We, I was, I was in charge of ordering the t-shirts. Coach Miller handled um, getting them to the right t-shirt um, person. But if there's an interest, I'm sure we can do something about that. I'm just putting it out there because I bet, I bet there might be some, okay. some inquiries about that. So another story I wanted to get into is John Toriella, who is the dad of Gina Johnson, who works in compliance here. Mm -hmm. And I got to meet him. He makes the best chocolate chip cookies. The I even shared them with the people here. Yes. Uh -huh. My guys in here, and they, <laughs> they were blown away at how good they were. But, um, you know, he came up and, and did an interview for this piece that we're doing in, in stadium. But then he got to come out to practice, mm -hmm. and he's been coming to games. But he's got a situation where he can't really get out, and he's got season tickets. But this pen pal program has meant the world to him because he's not necessarily the one that – is needing to commu he needed to communicate because he's the caregiver so exactly, that yeah. story is a little bit different yeah. can you tell us about that yeah um that was brought to us i want to say um this fall and it was kind of a different spin on what mm -hmm. we had typically been doing like you said it was a different situation and i was all for it and we got abby newland hooked up with um john over um there was a letter it was first a letter sent and then he sent his number back and was like if this would be easier we can go ahead and text back and forth and abby went with it um and yes, yeah, so John, John's wife um, 
is um, is um, not able to move around as well. She's really um, mostly stuck at home, and John is her primary caregiver, and um, so he obviously is stuck at home as well. So um, having the communication with Abby is really a, a nice way for him to feel like he can still get that social communication because he's um, stuck at home. I know um, Gina has told me that told all of us he's a very extroverted person and you met him and so you know <laughs> that man loves to talk and loves to have conversations so to be stuck at home is I, I couldn't imagine and um, so to have be able to text Abby and he texts me and to come to practice um, it was it meant a lot to him and it means a lot to me that we're able to give him that outlet during this really hard time and then Ava and Butch is a fun story yes. tell us about that one yes um so Butch is at our nursing home where we played bingo and um, Ava um, started writing letters to him this fall and it got to the point when restrictions were starting to get lifted um, she was one of the first ones it was like I want to go and meet him so I was like come with me and we went and she they hit it off right away and I kind of let them do their thing but they were she was in there I just said text me when you're done let me know how it goes and I'm like waiting waiting and an hour later <laughs> and she finally texted she's like I just got done and it went great and um, it was to the point where I believe he shared with her that um, he had a bunch of bird seed or that he needs bird seed because he loves to feed the birds outside of the nursing home. So I think it was the next week she came to practice with this huge bag of bird seed. I was like, can you take this to Butch? I was like, absolutely. And so I took it to him and he was really excited about it. And I believe he made her and her, her roommate, McKinley, who's also on our team, um, some little crosses and things that he does in his free time, made them for her. And um, she is now cleared. So usually you have to make a kind of an appointment so that the resident knows you're going to go in and see them. But he has given Ava full permission to come at any time. Wow. Uh, that she can stop by anytime she wants. There's no need to call ahead of time. And so I'm pretty sure she stops by as often as she can. And I know you, um, you've heard him say it, but he is definitely putting the success on the, of the season on his back. He <laughs> said it's all because of him. But and he gave her like a throwback jersey that's like really cute yes. and trendy. It is super <laughs> trendy, but he's like, these were mine from back in the day. And he saved the newspaper clippings of um, of Ava. She's been a stud. And so that was really cool. Just And I know, um, I mean, we all know um, the elderly love to go to bed early. And <laughs> even when I was working, we were, you know, it was bedtime around 7, 7.30. And some of our games will go past that, especially depending on the time zone. And... Um, the coordinator at Lancaster had told me that Butch was one of the only ones that, would, that stayed up. <laughs> he would go push past his bedtime to be able to watch the end of our games because he's really invested in it. Any other stories you want to tell? Oh, my gosh. I could tell so many. I will touch on um, another really amazing one is um, Mary Lou. Um, she is so we have the Julie Geis scholarship and Julie Geis's jerseys retired at our softball fields. Um, Julie Geis passed away um, during the attacks on 9-11. And so Mary Lou is her sister and I've actually had Mary Lou as a professor and her mom, Betty, was in a retirement facility here in Lincoln and we thought it would be a great idea. Again, this was kind of a situation where handwritten letters probably wouldn't have been the most beneficial. It, does take a lot of you know fine motor coordination and so we decided to go with phone calls so KK um, d would call her every Sunday because that's when she would be in her chair winding down from the weekend <laughs> and they formed a really great relationship and it was to the point where um, we were all able to finally go in me KK coach Ravel coach Miller and coach Sipple all um, scheduled a meeting where Mary Lou met us and we were able to go I was able to finally meet Betty so was KK and um, we just sat and talked for hours and it was really nice. I got to hear um, some about Julie and um, her time as a Husker softball player. Um, and then a few weeks later, Betty actually ended up passing away. Um, and Mary Lou had shared with me that she talked about that visit for the, the last few weeks of her life. Wow. That it was one of the highlights that she dreamt about it. And um, that's a story that is really near and dear to my heart as well. And um, that's incredible. Yeah, it was wow. a really fun experience. Coach Ravel was saying, so, you know, when you graduate and move on, that you've already got people lined up that want to help 
Absolutely. keep this going. Yes. Um, Ava and McKinley, our freshmen, um, they um, are going to take this on. And um, I've shared all of my documents with Ava. Um, and I've had her come in with, come like on meetings with me so she can meet the people who I've been, who have been amazing at helping me coordinate all of these different events and letter transfers and all of that stuff. And we've talked about kind of, there hasn't a lot of trial and error. It's um, definitely comes to the point where I think I found the best way to go about it and talked with her about it and she's ready to take it on here which is crazy in the next couple of weeks um or hope you know like next couple of weeks and i think i'll be passing it on to her so wow yeah what's next for you then yeah so i will be going a fifth year for school um kind of finishing up my bachelor's degree i i'm a big nerd i love what i'm learning so i packed a lot into my bachelor's degree um so after my fifth year i'll be going to grad school for speech therapy wow yeah that's awesome thank you oh my gosh i gotta ask you about winning the heart and soul award yes. that was one of the reasons why <laughs> yes. i had you on here was to ask you about the heart and soul award and it's a really big award and i'm gonna pull up the the description here mm -hmm. it was at the night at the lead last sunday you guys were on the bus coming we were back on the bus um but it is presented to a nebraska student athletes who have consistently gone above and beyond with community service and outreach initiatives throughout their college career. Dubbed the Heisman of life skills, a senior student athlete in their final season of athletic eligibility. But, you know, it was a big, you weren't there, but I was there. It was really special. The presentation of this award, you can tell it means a lot to the Nebraska Athletic Department. Mm -hmm. So for you to win that award, what did that mean to you? It meant the world to me. Um, I have watched the night at the lead the last three years and it's def watching this award be handed out. It's definitely, you know, something you strive for because it does mean that much and um, getting the honor of being a part of the group of athletes that have won this award and being chosen for it is amazing and I had no idea. Um, I found out as it was going on at the back of the bus when I saw Mary Lou come out to present the award or to talk about me and there were a lot of tears um, on the way home from Wisconsin from watching that so it was an absolute honor. Was that special even though because a lot of teams will go and sit together and cheer for each other you guys were competing mm -hmm. you were on the bus watching it live yes so billy andrews wins you know the athlete mm -hmm. of the year and a lot of awards given to the soft how special was that to get to share it on the bus yes. ride home mm, it was it was indescribable <laughs> um to be honest with you i mean I had no, like I said, I had no idea. So I'm sitting there and I was cheering on Mary Lou as she was going out on the stage, still not connecting any dots. And she started speaking about me and I started crying. It was just very emotional. And I had Olivia Farrell, um, my roommate, came and put her arm around me. Uh, Courtney, who's sitting right across from me, came and started, you know, giving me a hug. And Ani, who sits in front of me, Ani Rayleigh, started giving me a hug. And we're all hugging. And um, Liv is grabbing toilet paper from the bathroom so I can wipe my tears. But it was just really special to have the most important people to me right next to me. So you're a Nebraska kid. What has it meant to you? Uh, you're going to be celebrated this weekend with the senior mm -hmm. class. What has it meant to you to wear that uniform? Um, it has meant the absolute world. Um, like you said, I am a Nebraska kid. And, you know, you grow up wearing the Husker cheerleading uniforms for Halloween as a little girl <laughs> and coming to the Husker games and um, leaving school early to make it to the, you know, the basketball games and the softball games. So it – um, coming here was a dream come true, and there was there was no other option. It was go to go to Nebraska. So, like I said, I've been doing a lot of reflecting on my last four years, and I couldn't have asked for a better experience. And who it has helped me become, and the opportunities I have had, you won't get anywhere else. So it's been an honor. Wow, that's incredible words. Uh, this weekend, I know they're making a push. They want to break the record this weekend. Yes. So, and it's a big weekend for you guys, a big series that, you know, you need to get some wins this weekend over in yes. Indiana to secure postseason and going yep. into the Big Ten tournament, seeding all of that. How much do you guys want to break that record? More than anything. <laughs> Listen, please, if you're listening and you can, come out, support us. We want to break this record. We want to have the best atmosphere as it's the last time um, a lot of us are going to be playing in Bolin. We want it to be an amazing atmosphere and we could have asked for better fans. So pack it in and let's have a good time. Any final message for Husker fans? Um, thank you for all of your support. Um, not just this season, but the last four years for all of us seniors. Um, come to Bolin to send us out the right way. And um, as always, go Big Red. Carly Seavers, appreciate your time and yeah. everything that you've done. What a tremendous impact and mark you've left on Husker athletics and Husker softball. Thank you.